God bless you and welcome to today's edition of Standing Together. My name is Fergus Scarf. We have a wonderful program lined up for you today. Don't change that dial. We're going to be talking about prayer, how to pray, to whom to pray, how we use scripture in prayer, how we stand in faith for prayer, how we pray when things are going wrong, how we pray for others. It's going to be a wonderful and encouraging time in the Lord. If we can stand with you in prayer today, then please visit our website, hope.god.tv. Upload your prayer request. We will be praying over. A member of our prayer team will be standing in faith, believing that the Lord will minister to you in your hour of need. As I say, we have a wonderful program, but don't wait till the end of the program to be prayed for. Please visit our website, hope.god.tv. Now, one of the things that we as God TV are most excited about is the outreaches of our digital team onto Facebook and other forms of social media, onto our phones, reaching around the world with the good news of Jesus. Well, if you've never connected with the God TV team through Facebook and social media, here are some encouraging words that will encourage you and your faith that the Lord is using today's technology to bring the goodness of God to the nations of the world. For over 25 years, God TV has taken the Great Commission to heart, and we have broadcast the gospel to the nations. Using many different forms of media, God TV broadcasts on satellite, cable television, and across social media. We have received countless testimonies of God's goodness as He's touched so many through our programming, including our Facebook Lives. Here is just a small testament to the impact God TV is having. Yesterday, I made a comment and shared about my recent lupus diagnosis. You left a reply letting me know you prayed for me, and as I read that prayer, I felt a warmth within and a gentle, overwhelming touch of the Holy Spirit. I was a cocaine addict and alcoholic for over 30 years, and last June I was watching God TV when the preacher was talking about drug addiction, and I immediately felt his message hit my heart. I fell to my knees in the living room and gave my life to Christ. I have a son with nonverbal autism. I received a call from the God TV team member who has a son with the same condition. We were able to talk and share in a way only those who go through this kind of stuff really can. I'm blown away by God's goodness and how he provides what is needed at the right time. Two hours after my wife and I received positive COVID-19 results, the God TV team called and prayed with us. We are so thankful for God's timing and God TV. As media missionaries, we know the fruit of these past 25 years will continue to echo into eternity. Will you join us and become a media missionary yourself? We can't do this without you. Help God TV continue its mission of proclaiming the good news for another 25 years. Make sure that you connect with God TV through social media. Amazing, amazing things are going on promised at the start of the program. We are really encouraged today to be joined by two experts in prayer, those who have had experience over decades of spending time before the Father, praying His Word back to Him and seeing the fruit of a fruit-filled prayer life. We're joined today by Jane Holloway from the World Prayer Center here in the UK and also Pastor Oyinka from a Baptist Union and the Gate Church in Reading. Uh, Jane and Yinka, God bless you and welcome to the program today. Great to be on. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. It's wonderful that you've joined us today. Now, Jane, you work at the World Prayer Center. You've dedicated your life to prayer. But so many of us as believers, even in this time of COVID, have really been struggling to make sense of the place that we're in. I've really got three questions for you guys as we discuss in this half hour. I'll tell you straight up so that we know where we'd like to go. The first is, how do I pray for myself? How do we go about praying over our own needs and 
and the things that we struggle with? How do we pray for others, that they come to know the Lord, that their bodies would be healed, that they'd find peace with the Lord? And then thirdly, how do we pray about the big stuff, about revival and COVID and governments and the end times? How do we find ourselves placed before the Lord in prayer? So Jane, first up, how do we pray for ourselves? Wow, great, great question. And you know, it's one for those of us in Britain, we have a real problem with actually concentrating on can I, am I worthy to pray for myself? I see all the need out there. I think we just need to be, uh, start from that place that God loves us, that he's for us, that he's on our case, that he's on our side. And as, and as that, we come to him as his children, um, and that in that place of being his children, there's a little person I know under two that when they want, then they want to cuddle, they put their hands out and say, cuddle, cuddle. And it's just that sense of jumping on the father's knee and starting to share our heart. It's heart to heart, not so much what we say, but it's knowing that he's there and he's listening. And it might be crying, it might be silence, it might be lots of words, it might be firing questions. We have to be ourselves with our Father who loves us. Uh, Pastor Yinke, you've led a church for many years. In fact, you've been recently as the pre- serving as the president of the UK Baptist Union. Jane has, has, has given us some wonderful insight, but how do we go about praying for our own selves? Even as Jane says, even if we feel unworthy of the Lord. Well, I love where Jane has started from. It's so important to pray from an understanding that we're loved children, that God loves us. But I say this, one, one, of, the, one of the first lessons of, that I try and teach people in prayer about how to pray for themselves and the necessity of it is this. Even Jesus had to spend nights in prayer. And if you think about the Garden of Gethsemane, you see, prayer, cha- prayer channels our emotional energy. Like a riverbed, um, our emotions need to go somewhere. And when Jesus was in the garden, struggling with what was ahead, he turned to prayer. And, and just like a riverbed starts somewhere and leads the water somewhere else, our emotions take us in a direction. If we learn to channel our emotions towards God, the Father, just like Jesus did, take a lesson from him, uh, that's an, an amazing starting point. Lord, this is how I'm feeling, but I'm coming to you because I know that you care about me. So uh, absolutely, starting point, God loves us, but don't let the emotions take over. Take the emotions to God. Uh, uh, Jane, uh, Jesse from Australia has written in saying, please pray for favor for me in my workplace, that I would be able to excel and have favor with my managers and colleagues. Also for peaceful and restful sleep for my daughter. Now, Jane, if you were Jesse right now and you were praying for favor in your workplace, that you would have it, uh, uh, you would excel and have favor with your managers and your colleagues, how would you go up? How would you be Jesse in this moment and go before the Father with a request for yourself about your workplace? I think I would go with the words that Jesse has used herself and, and just come to him and seek him. Her heart is for favor. And so to ask the father to give her favor, to open the doors, to provide ways that she can bless others, that she can serve willingly, and that she can be actually a carrier of his presence in that place. Because she's there, uh, he wants her to be there, that's where he's positioned her, and she's carrying the spirit of the holy God with her. And therefore the release of that in that workplace would be my prayer. Oh, that's so encouraging. Pastor Yinka, one of the prayers requests that we have right now is from Marjorie in the US. Please pray for me as I'm having horrible evil thoughts and don't want them. I'm being taken captive and being worn out from them and I do live alone. Now, Pastor, we said we wanted to learn how to pray for ourselves, but here Marjorie needs us to pray. How do we get, what, what, how do we take our place in prayer, that place of a authority in the name of Jesus so that whether Marjorie 
surgery is somebody who's written into a God TV or it's our neighbor, our friend, our sister or brother, that we take that place of prayer, that we begin to speak life and see the situation, Marjorie's terrible and difficult situation. How do we as the body of Christ go about praying for somebody in a situation like Marjorie today? Well, I really sympathize with Marjorie. We know that our fight is not against flesh and blood. Look, when Esther and Mordecai prayed and fasted and called the whole of the people of God to pray, they were doing something significant. Uh, by uh, uh, praying and fasting, they were opening an opportunity for God to do something extraordinary. And because they prayed and fasted, they defeated the purposes of ha Haman. Now, some, some things will shift. Uh, uh, because we pray in the moment, Jesus said, but there are some things that will only shift because we've prayed and we've fasted as well. I, I think if you're in a spiritual battle, fasting is an extraordinary tool that you can use to focus your mind and focus your energies on God's purposes in that moment for you. And of course, when I find individuals are struggling and they're be, it's beyond themselves. That's what I do. I, if I'm praying for somebody that's really struggling and I'm looking for a breakthrough, I'll spend time in prayer and fasting uh, whilst I pursue that uh, breakthrough for that individual. Uh, uh, Jane, Yinka mentions fasting almost as a lifestyle and something that we can use as a tool to aid and give focus to our prayers. Uh, as somebody who works for the World Prayer Center and has given their life to prayer, how does fasting impact prayer? In a way, it's a mystery. It's a mystery, but it does because we're setting our heart and our mind onto the Father at that particular moment, whether it's a designated uh, meal that we're missing, whether it's a television program or we're fasting from social media, whatever it is, we're saying, Father, I'm here for you. I want to listen to you. And it's because of, I believe, that intentionality that the distractions can fall away and we can really be focused on listening, on worship, on praise. And funny thing, in, in fasting, often it's praise that erupts. It's thanksgiving that erupts. It's the joy of the spirit that erupts in, our, in ourselves. And also we get that insight, that perception that only the Holy Spirit can give on the situation that we're fasting for, especially if it's a personal issue or something to do with those that we love or in our community. It really is the key that unlocks the door. Jane and Yinka, it is so encouraging to spend time with you. I feel like I'm with my big brother and sister bringing words of wisdom, a, a precious God TV family, as we spend time with Jane and Yinka. We want to make sure that you have the opportunity to be prayed for. Jane and Yinka will be praying before the end of this program. Please do visit us at hope.god.tv and upload your prayer request. Well, I'll be back with more from Jane and Yinka right after this. Some things in life are too good to keep to yourself. Connect with believers from around the world. Share, like, follow, and subscribe to life-giving content online. Let's make the good news go viral. Connect with God TV on social media. The gospel has no limit. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here I am send me. You have a call on your life as clear and direct as Isaiah's. It came the day you gave your life to Christ. If we are to love the world, we must recognize God's holiness and work to be more and more like Jesus. It is urgent that we don't just go to church, but we carry the church out into community and we live full on for Jesus. Morning, day, or night. There's a way you can access faith-focused content for every part of your life, live or on demand. God is raising up the prophetic and the apostolic in nations around the world. Stay close, stay connected. Pray consistently, pray without ceasing. The key is hearing what God says and doing what he says. Download the God TV app today, available on Android, iOS, Roku, and Apple TV.
It's such a privilege to be spending time with us as the God TV family standing together around the world. We'll say today we're talking about prayer, how to pray for oneself, how to pray for our loved ones, our neighbors and our friends, but also how to pray for the big stuff. As God TV, one of the pillars that we run on souls, Israel and revival. How do we go about praying for revival? How do we pray for our governments? How do we pray for the big stuff like this issue? issues surrounding COVID and the great extraordinary uh, transformation to all our lives that this season has brought. Well, as I say, I'm joined today by Jane Holloway and Pastor Oyinka. Uh, uh, Oyinka. Um, uh, Oyinka, you have had the privilege to be part of a genuine move of God at your church, The Gate, uh, slightly west of London. How did you guys pray for an outpouring and what role did prayer have in sustaining what God was doing? Well, it's incredible. I, I mean, let me put it this way. We've had two outpourings, one in 2008 and one in 2016. And what's interesting is both of them came out of prayer. So the first one, imagine a traditional Baptist church. We maybe got six or seven people to the prayer meeting before the service every week. And then one day, uh, the Holy Spirit turned up in the prayer meeting and suddenly our small hall was filled with people praying and it went on for two years and then in 2008 the first outpouring God just turned up and what was a traditional Baptist church I was like thinking what's going on here people are falling on the floor laughing they're rolling down the aisles I was like thinking what's happening to our nice church lovely church people were on fire for Jesus it was extraordinary and, and the second outpouring again came out of prayer, out of seeking the face of God. And what happened was God turned a, a simple outreach onto the streets. God turned into something extraordinary, which has gone all over the world, called the turning. But prayer changes everything. Look, let me put it this way. You have as much authority as you're willing to submit to when it comes to heaven. And, and when you're submitted to heaven and align yourself like Jesus did, there's nothing the Father isn't willing to give to us. I, I, I'm astonished at what God has done. Um, I, I'm amazed at what God has done with the little Baptist church. And what he's done for us, he can do for you. Uh, Pastor Yinka, what would you say right now to pastors and Christian leaders out there, those of us who lead our homes and our families? If you could grab us all by the lapels, what would you be telling us to do right now? Start a prayer meeting in your church. The number of churches I've been to that don't have a prayer meeting. Let me tell you this. Prayer always leaves you with a testimony. You know, whether it, whether it was, uh, uh, as Jane has just said there, um, the disciples in prison praising God, it opened the prison doors. Whether it was Daniel praying and God enabling him to uh, tell Nebuchadnezzar both his dream and interpret it, it doesn't really matter. Prayer always leaves us with a testimony. And the pastor who isn't praying, somebody once said, is playing. So get prayer high on your agenda. Uh, every church needs it. Oh, Jane, I feel I feel like somebody's just been that, slapping yeah. me a bit right here. I'm going to start my <laughs> prayer meeting. Uh, Jane, uh, the issue of COVID has obviously transformed all our lives in the last year. How do we as the body of Christ pray for those big issues that are facing the world right now? What do we do? Well, I think I would I would almost say that God is wired us all differently, created us all differently, and we all have different passions. And when we're confronted with a big issue like a COVID um, or other issues that we're faced with globally, I always say to people, what's the passion? What's the passion deep in your heart? What, what is the area that God has asked you to pray for? Because some people love to pray for individuals. Some people like to pray for institutions. Some people like to pray for events or dates. We're all wired differently. And it's to flow with the Holy Spirit as to how he wants us to pray. And remember too, it might simply be opening our hands as we're watching the news, listening to the news feed and saying, Lord, have mercy. It might be lighting a candle, whatever, and just being silent before the Lord. It might be running out, you know, firing the questions. What's going on, Lord? I can't stand this. You know, heal the sick. And the other thing, of course, is we need to be stepping up as the body of Christ to pray for those who are ill to be touched afresh 
by the Holy Spirit and healed in body, mind and soul. I believe this is one of the biggest invitations to the body of Christ in our nation and probably every nation of the world. We have the Holy Spirit of the Lord living in us and the invitation is to take the good news of healing and freedom out to our neighbours, our families and our loved ones. To, to actually have the courage to step up and offer to pray. Oh, this is so encouraging as we look to the Lord and hear our elder brother and sister Yinka and Jane share with us. Well, we're going to have Yinka and Jane pray over all of our prayer needs right now. But first, we want to share the cornerstone scripture that the Lord blessed us with at the start of these broadcasts, read for you today by our India team. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. We've had many prayer requests come in as part of this broadcast, and we pray that we can pray for you today. Uh, Jane and Yinka, we've had Marika in Finland who's praying for a young boy. He needs healing from mental issues and deliverance from the ways of this world. I have prayed for him for the last two years, she says, and I feel that I've been attacked myself for standing with him. Marjorie, we mentioned, who's plagued by evil thoughts. Nico, here in the UK, who's praying that the Lord will make him positive every day. In India, hello, I haven't had a job for a year and I have financial issues. Jesse, also, we have prayed for and mentioned in Australia. Michael in the US is asking for prayer to get his ministry work done and also in the US, please pray for me for healing. Jane, I wonder if you can lead us off in a time of prayer, not just for these prayer requests, but also for those of our family around the world, followed by Yinka. Thank you. Father, we thank you that you are with each one of us in the amazing ministry, a mystery that you are everywhere. You are with your people. You, by your spirit, are hovering over indwelling in and so i just want to pray lord for your holy spirit to fall across afresh on all of those who've just shared those prayer requests all of us lord we need that fresh infilling of your holy spirit to lead us to guide us to fill us with faith to stand in what you have asked us to stand with what you've asked us to carry because with you, we will have all the strength that we need, all the insight that we need, all the resilience that we need, all the courage that we need is tied up in Jesus, is tied up in your Holy Spirit. So we're simply praying for release of your Holy Spirit to bring all that needs to be brought into the light that's hidden and all that needs to be released for freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah, Father, we want, I want to thank you, Lord. We, we've made a habit of praying in our church for every member of our church that wants a job to have a job. And you've, you've been faithful to that, Lord. You've provided. And so now I pray in Jesus' name for those who are in desperate need of work, who are watching this program. Lord, when when there was no jobs around, you found a job for Adam. Father, you're the God who provides for your people. And Lord, those who've been waiting for years, we ask that you open the door for them in Jesus' name. Father, think about Hannah, Lord, who wanted a child. Those who are desperate for, for babies, who are desperate for children. Um, Lord, I, I pray against the spirit of barrenness uh, that might be oppressing or holding back the fruit. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, that you've commanded that we bear fruit. And Lord, we pray right now for wombs to open up, uh, that mothers who are desperate for the babies to be born uh, might find a release in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, Lord, for mental health. We know that this time of COVID, 
has been difficult for many people and they've been struggling with their mental health. Father, we pray, Lord, you keep in perfect peace. Him whose mind is steadfast because it stayed upon you. We pray, Lord, that each individual who's been struggling right now would find release and peace in Jesus' name. Uh, peace from the oppression uh, of the burdens that have been inflicted upon them in this time. And Father, finally, I want to pray, uh, Lord, in Jesus' name, for those, Father, Lord, who've been struggling with family uh, 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 issues over this time, jobs, uh, uh, those who've lost their jobs, those who've been struggling with accommodation because uh, they've not been able to pay the rent. Uh, Lord, we just, I, I want to thank you, Lord. You're the God of all provision. Y you say, go fishing. The coin is in the fish's mouth. Father, I thank you, Lord. There is no lack in your presence. And, and Lord, I pray that, Lord, according to your word, as we go about your business, you provide not just a seed, but Father, you provide a coin by which we can, Lord, live in this difficult time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 and amen. Thank you so much, Yinka. Thank you so much, Jane. It's such a privilege that you would stand with our God TV family. If you haven't felt like you've been prayed for, watch this program again. It's such a privilege. We want to be standing with you. Please visit hope.god.tv to allow us the privilege to stand with you in prayer or call a number and let a member of our prayer team stand with you today. Guys, we've just got a minute left. I want to make sure that we connect with you. Uh, Yinka, how can we connect? with you and your ministry uh, for our viewers around the world. Well, uh, go to the turning.eu. Uh, you'll see our evangelistic ministry uh, that's going global. Go to the Baptist website. Uh, the Baptist Union has got some incredible resources out there. And, and if you are on Facebook, uh, go to How Do We Grow From Here, which is full of resources that can help you understand how you can grow your church, your ministry. Uh, we've got resources on there. How Do We Grow From Here? Uh, both the website and, face and uh, Facebook, and that should help you. Oh, bless you. And Jane at the World Press Center, how can we connect with you and your ministry? Yes, if you want to connect via the, web, the website, worldprayer.org.uk, um, we've got a virtual House of Prayer Facebook group on Facebook. And uh, those two places will probably give you best ways into all the avenues and connections that we have across not only the British Isles, but globally with the International Prayer Council and a number of other things. So I think you should find it all there. Oh, God bless you, Jane and Yinka. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. If we can stand with you in prayer today, if we can bless you in the precious name of Jesus. As God TV, we are passionate that you walk in the will and purposes of God, that you would experience his goodness. But as we heard today from Jane and Yinka, it is also about a conversation with the Father, that the Father is leading us in a wonderful, wonderful way. If we can pray for you, please visit our website, hope.god.tv. But from all of us here, we bless you in the name of Jesus. See you next time on Standing Together. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your testimony or prayer request to hope.god.tv today. Also, please consider becoming a God TV partner. For more information, visit god.tv.